so welcome everybody this 27th of may uh, this is a beautiful day like every day to talk about bitcoin and uh, and how to choose the right bitcoin wallet so currently we're doing like a security month uh, for everything uh, in related uh, what's related to bitcoin so this this webinar today is going to talk specifically about choosing the right uh, bitcoin wallet but in the upcoming weeks we have few uh, three other webinars they're going to go over the subject of sovereignty anonymity sovereignty in regards of your utilizations of, of bitcoin so i'm going to talk a bit more about that uh, later uh, but let, let's begin today so my name for those who don't know is uh, Ma Macek. i'm a, the marketing director at verify uh, we're a consulting firm basically uh, uh, mostly focused on security but we also launching uh, really soon a bitcoin OTC platform uh, that's going to be really pers with a personalized service and you're going to be able to buy Bitcoin from anywhere from Canada. So really excited about that. And for those who know us and would like to uh, be beta users of the platform, uh, they're invited to contact me and uh, I'll be glad to show them uh, how it works and everything. So, so I hope uh, some of you uh, will, will like to try. So let's begin. Uh, so basically, I'm going to talk today like a general view of what to think about when comes the time of choosing the right Bitcoin wallet. And what what the first thing that you have to ask yourself is when you're, you have to choose one is whenever you're using the Bitcoin for long term or more of a short term use. So basically, if your your purpose is to spend spend your Bitcoins uh, easily, uh, you may have to choose another wallet if you just intend to hold it for a really long time as an investment purpose. So there's a difference between, uh, for example, putting your Bitcoin in a cold storage wallet or simply having it on a mobile wallet uh, in order to be able to easily trade it or uh, spend it on, on, uh, on the Internet uh, over some stuff. So the first thing you have to ask yourself is what 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 is the purpose of uh of uh, the the wallet you're going to be choosing and you can have different kinds of wallets depending on the the portion of the bitcoins that you want to intend to a certain purpose so you can have a cold storage wallet for your long term investment and you can also have a little mobile wallet just for uh, just to to play with it and uh, show to show it to your friends how Bitcoin works, etc. So you can have uh, you can have multiple Bitcoin wallets depending on uh, the usage you you're gonna do with it. So there there are several types of wallets. You have uh, the the that some wallets that can be directly uh, possible to use uh, via a web browser. You can have an application directly on the your desktop. You can have an application uh, on your mobile, or they're also specialized. Uh, wallets uh, which are called harder wallets which are going to be like special devices only uh, for the usage of holding your your bitcoin keys and generating them and there's also different variants of harder wallets so you, we're going to go over them uh, uh, afterwards as well uh, but depending on your usage uh, you may have to choose either a mobile wallet or a desktop wallet depending on the features you are looking for so normally if we talk in a general sense uh, desktop wallets and hardware wallets will be considered as a more secure and more uh, more intended for a long-term use as in web wallets and mobile are going to mostly focus on the, the the user experience and uh, the, the how the, the the wallet is presented uh, so it can be easy to use for a lot of people so depending on what you you're looking for exactly you may want to to uh, choose one or another and we're going to uh, I'm going to present you later uh, resources uh, so you can distinguish either if a wallet is a desktop wallet a web wallet mobile so we're going to go over that as well so one of the thing uh, that is really important to consider when choosing your Bitcoin wallet is how does your Bitcoin wallet connect to the Bitcoin network? Since your wallet, what it does is it's basically holding the private keys that are authorizing the signing of the transaction that you will like to do uh, later when you, you want to spend the Bitcoins or when to receive them. So in order to do so, the wallet needs to connect to the Bitcoin network, which is basically uh, uh, a mesh of different uh, uh, Bitcoin uh, Bitcoin full nodes connected together and communicating. If they see a transaction coming in, they have to communicate the transaction to all the other nodes. So all 
the network stays up to date of what is happening into the network. So the, there's different way in which your wallet can connect. So you can either connect uh, to your own node, or the, the, the node of somebody else, uh, by directly connecting to one of the components of the, the network, which is called a node. Uh, but also, also uh, before connecting to a node, there's always a connection with, with a node. Uh, there can be uh, an additional layer, uh, which could be called a backend. And normally, when you're using a backend, it's because you're going to be connecting yourself to, to a certain server, which is a, the property of a, a certain company. And they're going to manage uh, how your wallet interacts with the network. Uh, you could have your own backend as well, but at that point, if you're just a regular user, you're probably just going to use your own node. Uh, so when there's a, the, the the concept of a backend in a in a in a wallet, it's because you're going to be you're not going to be connected directly to the Bitcoin network, which means that the company that controls the servers, the backend, could in the end control how you use your bitcoin as well so that's that's uh, the thing to uh, to think about as well and all the things i'm talking about so the the several types of wallet and how the the, the wallet connects to your um, uh to, to the bitcoin network uh we um, we have a very nice resource at verify which is like a complete analysis of uh, all the the all the main Bitcoin wallets that are used by people. So I'm going to show you at the end. So you're going to be always uh, able to find if you if you find a wallet that you like, you can always verify all the features uh, corresponding uh, to what you're going to choose. And then for like the more more technical users, uh, there's different ways also uh, in which you can connect uh, from the wallet to the Bitcoin network, uh, depending on the method uh, of communication. So uh, when a wallet connects with the API, that means there's going to be a direct link between a, a node and uh, uh, or either a backend uh, to the, the wallet. And that method means that you're going to be communicating all your uh, your XPUB entirely to, to the node so the, the, the wallet can know how 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 all the addresses that you have, all the transaction that you did. So this method, if you're not using, um, if you're not using uh, your own node to connect uh, to connect with an API, you're going to be basically uh, telling all the information about your wallet to the the server that you're connecting with. So for example, if some of you have a ledger. Uh, which is a harder wallet, you're going to connect to the Ledger Live platform. So basically, you're going to be telling uh, your XPUB, which is your public, your general public key to the servers of uh, of the Ledger Live. So they, they're going to know exactly all of your addresses, how many Bitcoins they, they have, uh, all the transactions that you're going to do in the future, they're going to be able to track you down. Um, a method in order to mitigate um, uh, this leaking of information, really important leak, leak of information that you do, you do when you connect with an API to an external server that you don't own is the SPV method. So that's a little bit more complex and I won't go into technical details, uh, but basically what it does is instead of asking uh, the information that you're seeking from the blockchain, the network, uh, through a single uh, node or a single server, you're going to ask multiple questions and multiple information that you don't really need in order to obfuscate the possible analysis that could be done uh, when you, you will be asking that information. So instead of connecting to, a, to one wallet, a SPV wallet, what, what it's going to do is going to connect to, to a few of them and uh, ask them random information so they by themselves couldn't really infer what, what is the exact information that you're looking for. So is the API method bad in itself? No, because you can always connect to your own node and you won't leak any information to an external server. So if you have the possibility of connecting um, uh, to your own node uh, with your own Bitcoin wallet, well, it's always preferred than SPV. But if you 
don't have that possibility or, or can do it yet, it, it may be a good option to mitigate the loss of your your or the leak, the loss of the information you're leaking through the internet by choosing a SPV wallet. Uh, one thing to consider is basically since you're going to be asking uh, much more information uh, through the SPV wallet, uh, it's going to take a much longer time to to sync with the network. So as an SPV wallet, it, it, there's also like, for example, mobile wallets that connect through the SPV method. They're going to take a while uh, to sync with the network. Um, and they basically download, they're going to download all the, all the block headers of all the uh, all the blocks, valid blocks. So that's why it takes a little bit more of time. So that's a, another thing to consider. So basically what is a wallet wallet is uh it's your vault it's your it's the way you're gonna secure your seed you're gonna secure uh your your coin so what's the most important is all the security functionalities that may be possible to to look and in, look into so you have different different kind of sec security functionality and some of you may want to look for really advanced security functions uh, because you you may have a lot of capital put it in bit, uh, into Bitcoin, so you want to make sure uh, you protect it the right way. So depending on if you're risk averse or you have uh, uh, depending on other resources such as do you have a a house or do you have a condo or do you have protection? So uh, everything has to be considered. But first of all, you you need to choose the right wallet uh, in order to be secure. So for example, there's the backup method. Uh, that could be prefer some there there are different backup methods uh, that could be done with uh, to to protect your funds so some may like one or another so one of the methods is to back up your uh, your bitcoins with a seed what is a seed it's a list of either 12 or 24 words that going to they're going to uh, give you the possibility to retrieve your bitcoins even if you lost your wallet if you lost lose uh, your desktop with the wallet that was on it. If you have the seed and you wrote it on paper somewhere and you conserve that, you can always retrieve your funds. That's how Bitcoin works. Uh, and the, the seed method was only invented because after uh, in the early days of Bitcoins, the only way that was possible to back up your Bitcoins was through a singular a single file. Uh, you, you could have uh, you could like encrypt the file, but the problem with files is they're still digital. So if uh, they can be uh, get corrupted over time, they can get lost, etc. So the the seed method uh, could be uh, could be a good option. It's although also more user friendly since it's a list of words. It's it's a hu humanly readable um, text, so it may be uh, more. Uh, it, it may be more familiar to a lot of people. And for example, some applications are going to force uh, that you write, write down the seed. Uh, that can be annoying for people like us, for example, that test a lot of apps. And we know we're not necessarily going to use the wallet itself to store our Bitcoins. We're just going to test out the functionalities, how we like the, the, the platform or, or whatsoever. So. Once again, it's a question of a personal matter. If you don't, if you want to test some uh, wallets out, and you're always forced to to back up your seed because they're gonna ask you to write them down again, well, that can be annoying. But it's all all the security functionalities that you may want to look for. You have the multi-signature method, which is a really more advanced uh, type of way to protect your funds. Basically, what it's gonna do is like creating a vault, uh, and you. Uh, uh, it's like creating a bank vault uh, that you need few keys in order to access and open uh, open it. So it's a really advanced method. And currently with the, the, the Bitcoin protocol, what you can do, you can do up to 15 signator, uh, signatories uh, and uh, any, type, any number of signatures on top of the chosen number of signatories, so uh, up to 15. Uh, but what we recommend for our clients most of the time and what, what are what are the uh, basics basic multi signature uh, schemes we do is a two out of three so what, what it does you you divide the access to your bitcoins uh but uh, with three keys and these keys you can distribute them geographically so you don't have the risk of for example holding all your coins at the same place and if someone comes into your house and say well basically give me your seed um 
while even if you give them one, they still need another one uh, to to make to be able to de de block the the funds out of the wallet. So this way you can distribute the risk by, for example, having one uh, one uh, seed at, uh, at your house, one at your chalet, one in a bank vault, and even if you lose one, well, you still have the two others um, to recuperate your funds and. And that's when uh, when you bring complexity to a security schemes, you always bring uh, more possible problems uh, problems as well. Because if you have a multi signature scheme and you lose two out of the three um, two out of the three uh, the seeds, well, you also lose the access to your Bitcoin. So you have to make sure before doing one, uh, it's the right thing to do for yourself. Uh, sorry, I left uh, something in French. So. Uh, in the presentation, uh, so here it's uh, the, there are some wallets that offer the possibility of, for example, implementing some extra measures over the spending of your funds, and uh, these measures will be verified with uh, another co-signatory, uh, which will be uh, uh, either a service. For example, you're gonna say if I try to make uh, a payment over one thousand dollars. Uh, it's gonna go to an external server, and that company is gonna verify. Oh, uh, he just uh, tried. Someone, someone just tried to do a transaction over one thousand dollars with that wallet, but there was a condition uh, to it to not authorize the spending if that happens. So the company may block because you choose to apply that kind of uh, uh, restriction. So they, there are numerous wallet. Uh, uh, and services that offer that that kind of thing as well. You have the basic 2FA, uh, two-factor authentication, so everybody uh, must know a little bit about that. Uh, you have that for your email, you have that for other accounts. So this uh, this can be done with uh, 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 Bitcoin wallets as well. Uh, some extra really features, for example, there's the concept of entropy, which is like the concept of randomness. You wanna make sure when the algorithm that generate your keys inside your wallet are truly random because if there are some uh, inputted malware that that uh, makes it more easier to guess uh, what possibly could be the private key with the the the, uh, the public key because somebody um, played with the the algorithm and he, and he knows how to decrypt it well some wallets because of that problem they offer the possibility of adding extra entropy uh, which will be, it, for example, physically rolling dice and you will be inputting that randomness. Uh, for example, for every roll, you will input that in the wallet to make sure that it's tru truly random. So that's a more advanced feature, but it's also uh, something that uh, we recommend on our side. You have the concept of being it, uh, is your wallet custodial or it's is it sovereign? So do you own your, your, your keys? Do you own your coins? or are they under the, the control of somebody else? So some people may feel more comfortable and that, that's fine, I guess. Uh, but ideally, if you wanna really follow the, the, the concept of Bitcoin, which is like free money, um, not having to rely on any type of infrastructure such as a bank and et cetera, you should always uh, at least try to, to hold your, your coin sovereignly. And uh, so, so that's a thing to consider. You have the locking method, so some uh, some wallets offer the the password method, or they offer, for example, the pin method. So that's a, also a question of your choosing. And you also have a concept, really advanced concept as well, of a passphrase, which is not a password, but it's actually like an extra word to be added to your seed. So it doesn't protect the application. Uh, that, for example, that you're gonna have on your desktop, it really uh, adds another word to your seed. So if you lose your passphrase, it's not like uh, you can regenerate your funds just with the seed because that passphrase is now part of your 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 bitcoins as well. So you want to make sure that if you add this extra security of having your own passphrase, uh, which will not be one of the standard words of the 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 seed phrase. Uh, that's that's also adding complexity, security, but it, it, ha it has the drawbacks of having to protect your passwords as well. Uh, more on the the 
the the question of how do you uh, what what are the type of addresses that you like to use in a bitcoin wallet so again that's really technical and not everybody uh are gonna really care about this but what is more important is that if you use a certain type of uh address uh you may be able to save up on bitcoin fees when you're transacting and if you use a older type of address uh, the legacy address you're going to be paying more fees than uh than needed so there's basically it's it's a no-brainer to really choose a, an address type that is the most up-to-date so what one of them are for example is back 32 which is uh, um, the type of address that supports segwit uh, the SegWit format, and it's always going to start with the characters BC1, and it's it's basically much more efficient the ways the way the the transaction is constructed, and because you're paying fees according to how much your transaction takes place in a block, uh, if the the transaction is smaller, uh, well, it's normal you're just going to pay less. And uh, uh, some more advanced features, for example, time locks and uh, or types of extra uh, conditions to spending, such as multi-signature as well. Uh, they're gonna be using, for example, the format of uh, P2SH, pay to script hash. So you wanna have these options as well in a wallet if you are a more advanced user. So again, I'm gonna go over quickly, like even more advanced for, uh, security functionalities. You have the harder wallet integration. So if you have, a, uh, as I, uh, is if you remember i was talking for example about the ledger uh the ledger wallet so if you want to uh benefit from the fact that your keys are generated in a separate device and not on your computer you're going to still need the 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 front end the application that going to connect to it so you can interact with it and send uh, and uh, when you sign the transaction on your device you you need to share that signature share that transaction to the bitcoin network in order to uh, in order to it to to function right uh, but you don't want to connect that ledger on which you generated keys to the ledger uh, to the ledger live platform because you're going to be uh, transmitting your xpub therefore all your information all your uh, uh, anything that related to bitcoin is going to be publicly uh, well, available to them to analyze or the, the information uh, could be leaked. So you always uh, want to have the option of connecting your hardware wallet to your own to your own uh, um, interface. So you can also be sovereign that way. And it's not all the hardware wallets that offer that option easily because they want they want you to connect to their own platform because that's another way to monetize their users is by having a lot of information about them. So you want to have the the possibility of integrating um, a hardware wallet uh, with the wallet you're gonna choose to interact with on on your desktop, for example. Uh, you have the coin join method, which is a really advanced mixing technique in order to obfuscate the possible uh, blockchain analysis that could be done over your addresses over your uh, over your uh, your your funds and uh, not all of the wallets offer that option so some of them uh, such as wasabi do uh, and we're gonna go more over that subject of coin join and uh, uh, privacy uh, in one of the the webinars i will be doing in, in the next few weeks, but it's also an option to consider. You have the option of connecting your wallet or using your wallet through the Tor network, which which makes it even more anonymous. So that's a, also something that is preferred if you want to be truly anonymous. You have the po you want to have the possibility of selecting the fees uh, according to your own your own decision some wallet don't even offer the option of choosing your own fees which is kind of a, a bummer you know you don't know how how much you're going to pay and uh, and if they have an algorithm that makes it efficient so you always want to have the option of selecting your own fees you also have the like an extra feature which is a, a rbf or replies by, by fee so you could send a bitcoin transaction through your wallet uh, but the fee is not enough in order to be uh, to be cleared uh, 
as fast as you would like to be. So you have the option to retake that transaction and replace the fees so you want it because you want it, for example, to be included in the next block. So not all the, the wallets offer that option. So it's always nice to, to be able to change the fee and always give the minimal fee and only boost it up if you needed the transaction to go more fast, fastly. Um, also, you have the concept of controlling your own coins because the way Bitcoin function is through the uh, a set of unspent transactions. And normally in your wallets, your, your coins should be separated according to what UTXOs you're holding and not just have a, a, a mixed Bitcoin balance that you don't know what is behind. Uh, so th th that is also really technical, but you, you want to have that option. You, you want to have the option of signing messages. Uh, for some, this is not really crucial. It's just a next draft thing. Uh, I don't know for those who are in the Bitcoin world, maybe you saw like two days ago, uh, there was a really early wallet that signed uh, that Craig Wright is a fraud uh, with his really early days Bitcoins that he was uh, in possession with. And the, the joke was that Craig Wright was pretending to hold these uh, these keys, but someone just signed a message proving that he owns these keys with a message saying, well, Craig Wright is uh, bullshitting you because he, he don't hold these keys because I can sign them and he cannot. So that's also a, an extra feature, but really not useful. Uh, well, useful, but uh, not, not in everyday uh, cases. You, so for more like... Uh, uh, people that want to play with Bitcoin and all its functionality. If you have a test net, which is like a fake Bitcoin network on which you can play with, with fake Bitcoins. Uh, and um, another, another really interesting feature is the partially signed Bitcoin transaction with that lets you sign a uh, transaction completely offline. And you're going to understand in a second when I'm going to show um, the 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 a hardware wallet that that offers that possibility. So you're gonna have the option to, with uh, the format uh, of a file, uh, like transmitting the 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 partially signed Bitcoin transaction between, for example, your device that is unconnected from uh, that is not connected to any other device in the internet, and you're gonna only only tr make travel the the sign transaction between the device and uh, the the interface that you'll be using so you will more understand in a second um, other few things uh, they want to look for when you're you're looking at a wallet and you you consider you using it it's um either when was the last version when was the last update because it's really important if there is a team behind it that regularly update, up, updates it according to new security vulnerabilities. So it's really important to check it out what's happening behind the, the, the scenes. You can look at GitHub um, or uh, for example, if they have a, a way to disclose any type of security malfunction that happens rapidly to their, their customer or do, to their users. So this is more of a, um, seeing who who does it and how they do it uh, more than the, the security aspects uh, 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 by themselves, but it's also really important. So talking about hardware wallets, I always recommend to have a, a hardware wallet when the, the sum you're, you're holding in Bitcoins becomes quite substantial. And you know, that, that's really, um, that's really up to you what's substantial to you. But for example, if you have a few thousand dollars in Bitcoin, you may want to consider investing a hundred dollar to for a, for a hardware wallet just to be just for the the cost of the extra security it brings it's it's, it's really nothing so uh, but uh, you have the classic you have the ledger you have the trezors of these worlds uh, they have a lot of users they have a lot of people that really use them so and they are really user friendly because you're going to be able to connect to your own uh to to the ledger life for example uh, platform uh, so it's it's better than nothing but i always recommend uh, on their side and what we use in our uh, security services is the cold card wallet so we're gonna go through we're gonna go uh, over the uh do you see? Yeah, you see. Okay. Uh, we're gonna go over the 
the website quickly because I just want to show you the few features we enjoy and appreciate. Uh, so the, the look may not be suitable for everybody because it has this cypherpunk slash a uh, really geeky look uh, because you can see through it. And for example, not, not everybody is gonna like that, but we, we do on our side. So you remember I talked about the, the option of PSBT, which is a, a way to for ex make that transaction travel from your cold card uh, to, to your computer in order to send the, the signed transaction to the Bitcoin network. So how it works, you see you have this little, um, you have you see this little thing here you're going to be able to input a micro sd card into it uh, and uh, the cold card itself is only going to be connected uh to 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 the uh, the, the power wall so it, there's not going to be any connection uh to the computer uh, so on the on the device you're going to be able to sign the transaction and the signed transaction is going to create a file which is the psbt file and it's going to be on the micro SD card. So once you're done, you can take out that micro SD, uh, SD card, put it in your computer, in your, your slot for your, uh, your micro SD card. And then you're going to take that file out of the micro SD card and, for example, use Electrum, which is another wallet uh, interface that you'll be connecting with, and share that transaction through Electrum. So you never connected your device on which you're you're holding your keys, which is your cold card, um, to the internet or to the computer. So that's a really interesting feature. Sorry about that. Um, so you have a, a lot of uh, other functionality, uh, more advanced security functionalities. For example, there's always the problem, uh, which we call the $5 wrench problem in the Bitcoin security world, uh, which means that nobody how much uh, software, how much encryption, or how much uh, things you do in order to protect your Bitcoins, if somebody comes in and uh, shows you a, a stick, a metal stick or a hammer or a wrench, uh, that costs no, nothing for him, basically, and say, "Well, basically, give me your Bitcoin. I'm gonna, I'm, uh, I'm gonna beat, beat you with it or kill you." Well, probably, no matter how much security in in, in terms of uh, uh, in in terms of uh, uh, digital security you have you use for your Bitcoins, probably probably you're gonna be giving your Bitcoins, right? So, for example, there's a the option to put a, 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 a so-called Juris pin, which is a fake pin that you will, that you will input in your device uh, to either block completely uh, the wallet or, for example, show him a fake wallet on which there's only a little portion of your funds and not the real funds. So he may think, oh, well, okay, I stole one Bitcoin for you, but you, you, you have 10, for example. So you end up on a much more uh, ideal situation. And so, so, so there's other products, for example, that we also recommend is uh, engraving your seed into metal. So uh, even if your house bur burns down, you, you have insurance for your house, right? But you, you won't have insurance for the, the piece of paper on which your seed is. So it's better to hold it on some metal so you make sure that even something crazy happens or you, your house gets flooded or whatever, uh, while well, you, you won't lose your Bitcoin. So. Uh, I, I invite everybody to check it out. And I was also talking about entropy. So here you have the option of uh, inputting extra entropy. So we won't go over everything, but uh, it's just to say that uh, this product, it's a Canadian company. They, they, they have a really, um, really uh, good stuff. Um, a quick note on the Lightning Network wallets. Uh, so uh, for those who don't know, uh, Lightning Network is a second layer for um, fast and cheap tr uh, trans uh, Bitcoin transactions. Uh, with the, the way it functions is you create like liquidity channels with other users and you lock some Bitcoins on the first layer uh, in order to do so. And you'll be transacting according to uh, what's so-called uh, channel states. Um, and if, for example, I have a a liquidity channel with somebody uh, and I input one Bitcoin of liquidity and I regularly I will be doing transactions. So we have by ourselves in that channel to 
um, update the the last um, uh, the last uh, balance we each hold, and when when we're done transacting, we only at that moment are gonna uh, report the last uh, channel update to the Bitcoin network, and then the balance uh, for each one of us are gonna uh, are gonna balance the, themselves out on uh, the the first layer. The problem is that if you lose that last channel, uh, you you don't have a recourse on on the Bitcoin network to say, well, uh, uh, I, I did this transaction with the guy over the transact uh, the, the Lightning network, but I don't have the last channel anymore, uh, uh, so I can't prove I was trans uh, uh, I was uh, getting Bitcoin or he was transferring me Bitcoin. So he. Uh, for example, if you exchange some services or goods for these bitcoins, but you lose the last channel that proves that they were supposedly be yours, well, you lose the bitcoin. And the problems with Lightning Networks in the last two years and what uh, developers have been working on is the fact that it was really easy to lose the, the channel, the last channel state, so b people were losing funds. It doesn't mean you can have fun over the Lightning Network because it's getting better and better. Uh, it's getting more easier and uh, it, and safer to use it. But I don't recommend, and you should absolutely not use the Lightning Network wallet in order to store your fund, funds. It's not ready, completely ready yet. So so that was a quick note. But uh, you can always check it out, and uh, they have uh, there there are some great Lightning Network wallets to use it, uh, but just don't use it with big sums and in order to store your Bitcoin. So I talk a lot, uh, I, talk, I talked a lot today about all the security features uh, and there's a lot of them and you don't have to, to really uh, be completely secure. The, the way you should work is to do it like gradually and understand gradually all the security features that you may like in the future uh, and if for example bitcoin rises in uh, uh, in value then you you can upgrade your your system as well uh, but we have a really nice resource for uh, those uh, for uh, those who want to explore all all these functionalities all these different wallets who offers them and what uh, whatsoever uh, okay everybody sees so basically, what 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 is this that I'm presenting here? Uh, it's one of well, uh, I would say it's the most uh, uh, extensive research uh, wallet uh, research uh, on the web uh, because we basically analyze over thirty of them and over fifty features. So today I talk maybe about twenty features, but there's even more. There's even more to learn, and the Bitcoin rabbit hole is uh, is endless, so uh, it's uh, it's impossible to keep track of everything. But this is a at least a good uh, option to to start uh, analyzing the different wallets. So uh, you, we have we also recommended them. Some of them are recommended. Some of them are some uh, somewhat recommended, not recommended, and to be avoided um so you're gonna you're gonna remark so for example all the exchanges holding your when you don't really hold your keys we don't recommend it because the the basis on which we did the analysis was always in a in the mind of security um privacy and uh, sovereignty so all these wallets here in green are gonna be uh uh mostly in in that line of uh, of way of thinking and uh, for if you don't understand a feature, uh, there is a recommend there is an article uh, going exactly all the features and explain, explaining each one of them. So uh, if you're looking for a hardware wallet or uh, some of your friends are looking for some, um, uh, this is a great resource. And just by the way, on the YouTube Bitcoin Mo Montreal YouTube channels, we always uh, input the uh, we also have the slides on them so you're going to be able to find the link and uh, and uh, through through it uh, i'm just going to paste it in the the chat quickly just for those who want to check it uh, right now so uh yeah so you you have a job to do on your side it's not just me uh because you have to ask yourself uh what you like what you're looking for how much bitcoins you want to protect uh so the that's a lot of uh, things to consider 
And if you have some questions, extra questions for me, uh, you want to talk with me, have a call, uh, I'm always there to respond to your questions. And for those who want to maybe a more advanced session uh, or a tutorial uh, going over uh, how to install a wallet, what exactly to do, uh, we also offer this kind of service, personalized service, uh, so you can contact me directly. Uh, we also do blogs, uh, other webinars. So if you want to regularly watch some Bitcoin stuff, you can always follow us either on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter. Uh, you have all the, the, the handles here. And as I was talking in the beginning, uh, we have the security month going on. So this is the first, uh, the first one in the, the English version one. So you have uh, the choose the right Bitcoin wallet. Next week, I'm going to talk about running your own Bitcoin full node. Uh, the 9th of June about uh, staying confidential and uh, uh, the last of one of them is going to be keep your Bitcoin in cold storage. So if you're interest, uh, interested by those, uh, they're going to be posted really soon uh, on the Bitcoin Montreal meetup, um, not YouTube channel, but uh, I'm going to send the link as well. But that's the way you you uh, you connect it to this one. So you will, you're probably already already connected to it but i'm just gonna send it in the chat just to be sure so i hope to see, to see you at uh, the next one uh next ones as well so i'm i'm done i'm basically done so i'll be happy to go over uh, the chat for uh, those who ask some questions and uh, if somebody want to speak up and uh, uh do a joke or uh, tell a fun bitcoin fact or have a question as well don't hesitate so i'll be uh, shutting up now and uh, and uh, see if uh, there's any questions uh, yeah okay so chris christopher chavez hi chavez happy to uh, see you there is a mo mobile wallet option locked to one cell phone or is it possible to transfer uh, is it Okay, Nathaniel responded. Any good mobile wallet that makes you back up uh, back your private key in the form of uh, which means you can recover your wallet using another mobile wallet app which implements the recovery. Again, any good wallet does it in no way tied to your actual phone. Really good response. Uh, that's the thing. Always remember that the seed is the most important thing when comes the the uh, when comes holding bitcoins because if you lose your computer and you had your for example a desktop wallet app on it and you didn't save your words while well, you basically lost your bitcoins as well but if you have the the, the seed that represented these bitcoins uh even if you lost you lose your computer if you even if you uh, uh like the, the file gets corrupted or whatever you're going to be able to retrieve them so it's always important whenever it's a mobile wallet uh, a desktop wallet or a, uh, or a hardware wallet to always protect your seed. And this seed should never be on a, a digit in a digital form. So you shouldn't take a picture of it. You shouldn't, uh, can, you know, just, just write it down. Right. So even better if you have the possibility of uh, engraving it in metal. So that's like a more advanced and, and paranoid way of, uh, doing it but it's also a good option so really a uh, uh, really good answer Nathaniel and also if uh, so if you have other questions uh, don't hesitate So that's a good option. Samurai Wallet is a relatively new, I think. Uh, do you think using a more established option has merit, or would you be comfortable going with Samurai? Well, that that's uh, that's a really great question. Uh, it's, it's always a question of doing your own diligence about the team behind. Uh, the do they have the qualification? Do they have some other past Bitcoin projects uh, they have been working on that they have proved they are competent, or are they just like a random new uh, Bitcoin wallets that 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 surprised everybody and nobody really knows them? Uh, well, 
in the case of Samurai Wallet, uh, I think they're fairly competent, but there has been some, I would say, tensions going on between Samurai and uh, Wasabi Wallet because they they use they both use CoinJoin, but in different ways. So CoinJoin is the way you you mix your bitcoins, and each one of them accused the other of not being anonymous enough or uh, using CoinJoin in a bad way. Uh, I tend to believe uh, because of the data and uh, the way their CoinJoin feature is structured that Wasabi is more private, uh, not only because they have much more user and much more volume, uh, but because they also have run the, uh, mixing rounds with over 100 people as in um, the Samurai wallet uh, does a CoinJoin version when there's only five, uh, if I remember well. So I wouldn't say I'm not comfortable with going with Samurai, uh, but I won't do it myself because I have seen some like bad, bad, bad stuff going on on Twitter and they are really like aggressive and, uh, and uh, kind of weird, I would say. So I don't know, it depends, maybe you're in a, in the team samurai uh uh you're on the samurai team so i don't want to start the debate there uh, i'm not the, the the most qualified to 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 have a like to trend trench on this but uh, yeah uh, so yeah you said not on the team but uh it's just yeah i i had to mention the fact there was some uh uh really like a controversy in regards of who's the right quentin wallet but in the end uh uh, I won't say. Uh, I wouldn't say the, the, the. You shouldn't trust their wallet. Yeah. Hey, Maciej, uh, I wanted to uh, say something. Ask you a question, actually, about uh, the uh, cold card wallet. Uh, when uh, you uh, do the uh, entropy with uh, the dice to uh, increase uh, the security of your uh, passphrase uh, in case there's a. Uh, some way of the developer or the chip creator that has like a way to uh, reverse engineer your seeds that you're getting from the uh, native entropy inside the, that they have, you know, is mm. that is it also the same thing when you uh, instead of doing that uh, you uh, add a passphrase? Is is that the same concept in order to add security, or those are two different things? Mm. Uh, I would I wouldn't I wouldn't say it's exactly the same thing, um, because the the way entropy will the extra entropy will be used is to construct the seed itself, as in the past phrase. It's like an additional source of uh, of encryption on on top of it that you can choose because the past phrase isn't limited. Um, to 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 the basics, uh, you know, there's like over one thousand words uh, that follow the BIP uh, the BIP standard that implemented the the seed uh, phrase, um, and you can, for example, your passphrase can be up to thirty characters long. It can be fifty characters long. You can use letters. You can use uh, other type of uh, uh, numbers, other types of characters. But I would I I don't know if I. I, I, I don't know if I can qualify it as the same in a more like di digital way of of thinking about it. I, I don't know if it's actually entropy passphrase. I wouldn't say so, uh, but I don't have, uh, I'm not, I don't know. Uh, I, <laughs> uh, I, I don't think it does the same thing in the same way. It's because the passphrase is like, it's, it adds encryption, but doesn't add entropy, right? So, so it's a separate thing, in my opinion. But I don't know how. I don't think from an engineer perspective how it'll be perceived or the exact denomination of the distinction between those two. Um, but just if you think about it simply, I don't think it's the same. Uh, which one, which one do you think is uh, offers more security? Like, if you could only choose one, which one would you choose? 
I think I would choose the passphrase uh, because if I do a choice of for a harder wallet, for example, the cold card, I more or less all uh, more or less already trust the wallet itself. So I would say that the the entropy is will be kind of good because they use a, they use a secure elements and everything. So I would say that the passphrase will be more preferable. Um, the 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 extra entropy is a more of a trouble you're adding to yourself. It's a it's a, an extra. It's really like a bon bonus, I would say. Uh, or well, if your if your device is corrupted, uh, it's uh, it's really needed, right? So I would say that I will choose the passphrase. Yeah, I think one thing that's important to add about the cold card, vis-a-vis -vis the passphrase, is that if you choose a passphrase, um, you now have access to essentially a second wallet. So when your cold card is loaded with your seed, you essentially have a Bitcoin wallet, right? A separate public key right there. And then you have to navigate in the menu of cold card to add your passphrase. And that's effectively creating a secondary um, public key, a secondary wallet. So by going the passphrase route, you can use the base wallet of just the key, of just the seed as a spoof or something like that. And then your real cold storage could be in the passphrase wallet. So you've got one wallet with just the seed, one wallet with your seed plus your passphrase. That's a really great point, uh, Nathaniel. Ba basically, you could have not only two, but you could have multiple pass passphrases uh, on just one cold card because it creates a new, completely new wallet. So you're absolutely right. So even with that answer, I will I would say that choosing a passphrase is uh, in terms of security and how how you can play with that 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 aspect of spoofing and having multiple wallets, uh, fake wallets or whatsoever is uh, gives you much more flexibility in terms of uh, and how you can play with your security as of like extra entropy is, is like it's extra entropy, you know, it's a, it's not, it's not a tool in itself. It's just improving one of the, the already needed aspect of creating a wallet. So, so it's, it's another thing. Yeah. I don't know if what do you think about that, Nathaniel? If you choose uh, uh, the passphrase as well over the extra entropy, if you have to choose, be, uh, it's like a uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, 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 there's sort of two different things, right? The yeah, creating your own entropy with the dice. When you're thinking adversarially, you're thinking, who is my opponent here? My opponent is the developer of this device who might be able to reverse engineer the random seed generation some time in the future, figure out that my public key was derived from a cold card that he programmed, you know? So you're thinking in that route and adding your own entropy sort of mitigates that risk or removes that risk completely, essentially. Um, now, in my opinion, that risk is extremely small, almost negligible. But for the tinfoil hat people out there, it's good to have the option. The passphrase is on top of that, is just allowing you to derive more addresses on top of that seed. So if you actually do fall for the developer adversary and he does discover your private key uh, down the road, he would also have to find your passphrase. You know, so I think at this point we're talking about like very, uh, edge case stuff but this is the point of the conversation so i hope that clears things up yeah there was Thanks, recently sir. uh there was recently on the cold card uh, an attack the the successfully made with like some lasers and you know the the way some bits of data are stored in some part of the device for a few few seconds I, i'm not like it's it's so complicated that you know it's always evolving and uh so it's it's it can be uh, really interesting over all the use cases, but in the end, like 
we live in a we live in a pretty well safe country i would say in canada well for those who are in canada so like it, it's really hard to to think about the situation where you're going to be like attacked or uh, for example like as the developer type of attacks it's really hard to imagine but it, they can happen so but for a regular user if you're not being targeted and you're not being like attacked pers like in a really specific way uh like you don't need to be that paranoid right so so but having a passphrase it, it's great so I had another question related to these uh, C generations. Uh, once I asked uh, a uh, guy who uses Bitcoin uh, why he never recommended any hardware wallets, and the answer he gave was because you know he he saw that like the point of failure of any hardware wallet was a secure element, and that you were relying that no one had any way of like reverse engineering uh, that how it works to come up with the, the seeds uh, at some point in the future. And uh, so that's why he always recommended Electrum Wallet. And so I wanted to ask you, when you use Electrum Wallet, suppose you have like an old computer that uh, you just install Linux and you install Electrum Wallet uh, and you use that computer to generate uh, seeds that are like, in your opinion, probably even safer than uh, a hardware wallet because in that case, it doesn't have a... Uh, that point of failure of trusting a uh, secure element. Uh, that is either open source or closed source in the case of that you're doing this with a laptop how is the the the, the randomization the entropy created on the laptop are, are you now like relying on uh, the intel cpu or is that part of the electrum software well i think that what when there's uh the concept of having like a separate device just to generate your seed uh there are some uh computers that are considered as non-backdoored but if you set up your stuff in a way that you don't intend to never again connect your 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 computer again or have never connected it it's it means that the the algorithms that are going to be generating your entropy couldn't have been uh spoofed or uh or influenced in any kind of way because there's a distinction to be made to trusting the algorithm that makes uh the the entropy and there's a distinction to be made with uh it was that algorithm uh, uh hacked or it was it was it uh already inputted some uh extra it was it basically compromised so th that leading to uh, an eventual uh, brute, easy brute forcing of your seed or etc. So when, when if someone takes the extra step of having his own uh, laptop that you never connected and uh, everything, like the learning curve uh, of it and like the the extra extra uh, capital you have to use and uh, the possible errors you could you yourself. I think the for those who are not like really technical and don't uh, are not doing this with just in their everyday life, the the possible problems that could arise from that type of setup if they're not using if they don't have a friend that guides them or whatever, uh, it outweighs the possible um, risk coming from using a secure element chip like in a, in a cold card in my opinion so you're right if you're if you want to be really secure and really really independent and not trusting anything absolutely you could you could uh use like an external device but as in the the specific device you will use i don't know if we'll use the the like a x86 processor or or something else because it will depend on the device you choose but i'm not as that advanced in terms of like uh how does it works to give you a fully answer on this but in my opinion if somebody does that it's because they have a lot of money uh and they want to invest in like a proper security and uh they, they're gonna hire a firm and uh whatever or you're really a nerd and a, a geek that wanted that want to do it with his own bitcoins 
and uh, he he's going to be trusting his own skills, you know. But in most cases, is I agree with the fact that nothing is secure. Like, it's secure elements always evolve. So in the beginning, uh, the cold card had like a pre the previous uh, the previous uh, uh, safe elements was removed. It was it was upgraded to a new one because that's the way. Uh, that's the way that security works in general, right? So there's always people breaking it. You have to upgrade to a new version. So it always, it's it's the same cycle. So I would say that, yeah. So that's my like long answer. But <laughs> maybe Nathaniel, right. you have something to say? Um, just a couple things to add on there. It's a it's a little bit of a. There's two different things in this conversation. There's the random number generation, and then there's the secure elements. And then you asked about Electrum wallet, random number generation. The code is open source. The random number generation in Electrum wallet uses your operating systems number generator deep down. Um, and you know it's a very popular software. It's been obviously uh, looked at by hundreds of thousands of people in the community. So it's, it's highly trusted in, in its method of seed generation. Um, but like anything else, these are the kind of things where if, if you don't quite understand how it works, the peace of mind that you get from generating entropy yourself could be worth the price of like, and the time it takes to roll those dice, you know? So I think that's something to remember. Um, you can always attain that, that level of satisfaction psychologically by just going to the tinfoil hat level uh, because it's not that difficult to do. And that way you're just, you know that what you've done is safe. Um, and then the secure element really is just your private key is stored in the cold wallet in the secure element. And um, if you don't like that idea, well, you know, you could store your seed on metal um, and use a passphrase that you remember and then just don't keep a cold card around, right? Don't keep your private key um, in the form of the secure element on the cold card. Buy a cold card down the road when you actually want to spend your Bitcoins. There's many ways of mitigating those risks. Thank you. You could also encrypt your 24 words. Um, so that even on the metal plate, they're not, you know, uh, plainly uh, readable. But again, I, I really don't think that these are recommendations for your average Bitcoiner. These are the kind of things we would recommend if you're, you know, looking at being a millionaire in Bitcoin. Um, it all depends on what, what you want. Yeah, so uh, I don't know if that was the last question. Maybe if someone has a last question, uh, I'm I'm gonna take it, and um, or if somebody has a comment or whatever. Uh, if not, uh, I'm gonna see all of you, if if possible, next week for the next webinar. So I think I think nobody has any questions. Nobody. Okay. So uh, thank you for all those who are here. And I really appreciate the fact people uh, interact and uh, enjoy the presentation. So I just want to uh, point, point out that the video is going to be on the Bitcoin Montreal YouTube channel. So for those who want to revision it and uh, recheck it and uh, see the slides, uh, all, all of this uh, are going to be there. And let's see, let's see each other next week. So thank you. Uh, thank you again. And yes, I have a presentation tomorrow uh, in French in regards of uh, keep your Bitcoin in cold storage. So I, I, I'm finishing up the, the security month in French uh, and I just started the one in English. So for those who want to assist to the one in, in French tomorrow, uh, I'll, I'll be uh, glad to have you. And it's already on the Bitcoin Montreal uh, YouTube channel. So thank you. And uh, see you soon. Bye-bye.